Yes. I'm you just coming from talking to Helmut Kohl there. I started to say, you've been practicing already, haven't you? Good afternoon, sir. He's a remarkable fellow. All right. Thank you. Where is Cole? Where is your Helmut Kohl? Cole is. Cole did a good job yesterday on being press or whatever. Yeah, that's all. Yes, yeah. yeah. I found out something there, though, I could tell you. But very disturbing to me them leaving any of his voice on and at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and missing to the translation. You know what I found out? This is what comes from having to go to an ear doctor finally for a bad ear. Look away from the screen. When you're looking at him, you tend to listen to the, Je the German. If you look away when he's talking on the set, you hear the translation better. It's interesting, too, though, that he mm -hmm. understood English perfectly. He didn't have to have the question <clears throat> translated. Well, he had a button in his ear, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I don't believe he figured he was getting instant translation. Well, maybe he did. I thought he was listening. He, uh, he understands, but, yeah, he, 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 but throughout yeah. lunch. Oh, yeah, George uh, spent 90 minutes with him. Throughout yeah, lunch, oh, he, We're uh, talking about the program yesterday in the air with Helmut. Um, George, sit over here. No, no, stay, uh, stay, 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 what was the question? Well, the question was, I just assumed that he had a button in his ear and was getting instant. I said I saw he was hearing the questions in English, but the answers were being translated. He was answering in German. Does he understand English? That's yes, some. He understands it pretty well. Hmm. He worries about That's speech. why you see it. Stand back there together. Can you stand back there? Yeah. This, is, this is Timmy Davis, his neighbor, lady, the 83-year-old. Woman was overcome by smoke when her house was apartment was on fire. Now why don't we have to change it? Supports you. We're in 80 different cities in the country. We cover every state in the country. And 
we support you all over. I appreciate that very much. Thanks, just well, thank you so oh, much. Thank you. Thank you. We want you to know that in this election, our, the people that we represent, which is 70% of all the labor in the construction industry, we will be reaching out to them and making sure that they'll be supporting us on the letter writing campaign right on down to the whole thing. It's made a difference. And I think the country recognizes it. Four more years and we'll be much, much farther ahead. That's all we're talking about. I don't know if I ever told you that the first job I ever had, summer job, 15 years ago, I was going out there to a minister in our town and put a little group together with buying old houses, remodeling and selling them. And at 14, I started with the pick and shovel. And then those other jobs in that same group came along. Before the summer was over, I laid out a good floor and I shingled the roof, I painted. It was an open <laughs> shop. Well, I've, I've followed you and I really had uh, no doubts from the very beginning in California. And I think uh, when you came to Massachusetts, I was involved with uh, Michael Aaron, the finance chairman out there. And I know. It's my great pleasure to present President, the President of the American Red, Red Cross. I'd like to see you, sir. We had the pleasure of being here last May. You helped us kick off a fundraising campaign for our disaster effort, a very successful one. <laughs> we thank you again yeah. for it. It's a pleasure to be here with you. This was right. Thank you. 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 Mrs. Virginia P.A., Director of the Office of And Mrs. Mary Ann Hank, Mr. Yeah. President, who is a Senior yeah. Associate of Nursing. Good to see you. is Red Cross Month. <laughs> <laughs> we urge all Americans to generously support the work of their local Red Cross chapter. And you would like to have Thank you. And the sign. Thank you. Mr. President, on behalf of the Red Cross, we are most appreciative not only of this very gracious gesture, but Last May, we were here, Dr. Holland, our chairman, who you appointed, and myself, to ask for your help in the disaster campaign, and we were very successful, and we know in very large part because of your personal efforts. So we thank you for that. The American people responded extraordinarily well. Well, that's great. You know, the wonderful thing is, with all the recession and everything we've had, you'd be surprised how many people, like United Way, is the Well, that's good. You want to go on outside? Are getting more than they ever did. gives 103 years now of history of the Red Cross serving the American people. And you've been a part of that process, and I'd like to uh, leave it with you, sir. Well, thank you very much. We're very proud to have it. And uh, you will be receiving a, a letter from us uh, suggesting that perhaps in your busy schedule at convention time in May, uh, down in San Antonio, maybe there's some way for you to uh, drop in. It's going to be Armed Forces Week, and we know that the people there are hoping that you can What part of the month is that? That's the second week of May in San Antonio, sir. Because I don't know, 
I don't usually know that much about the schedule. Right, I do we know, know that, that sir. There's a couple of things already booked. In May. <laughs> well, we, we thank you for your help very, very much. Well, and most gracious. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. President.